I mean, the brain, roughly speaking, can be divided into two parts. The back, which is to do with the input vision, which is right at the back of the brain for some reason, as far away from the eyes as possible, hearing, touch, and so on. And the front of the brain, which is to do with the output, that is to say, the movements that we make. And this is basically all in the frontal cortex or the frontal lobe of the brain, right at the back of which is the, the motor strip which has direct which is in which the body is mapped. So they're direct corrections from particular bits of motor cortex to fingers, arms, legs, etc., etc. In front of the motor cortex is the premotor cortex, a very original name, um, which does more high-level things. In front of the premotor cortex is the prefrontal cortex, again, very unimaginative name, which is doing even higher-level control, like long-term goals and plans, we think of this in terms of a hierarchy of control. If you can say where the top of the hierarchy is, that's where free will is, because this is the point where decisions, self-initiated self decisions are made. Now in the lab, you can only get people to make very simple decisions. And the classic experiment that everybody still talks about is the one by Benjamin Libet in 1983 when the decision was, should I raise my finger or not? <laughs> and the idea was that in this case, it's a free decision because no one is telling you when to move your finger, you have to decide for yourself. The first thing we'll do is measure your hat size to see what size EEG cap you'll put on. thing we'll do is uh, place some electrodes on the cap and we'll be particularly interested in the front part of your brain because the experiment you're about to do concerns decision making in this part of the brain. Uh, altogether we'll have 17 electrodes on the cap and then we'll also add some onto your face to control for eye movements. during the experiment, we can record that and later the computer will reject those uh, trials. It's very important during the experiment not to move your eyes. That's the cap ready. The next step we're going to do is prepare the hand electrodes for the EMG signal. The experimental setup is complete. We're ready to begin the experiment. This was in 1983, so he didn't have the sorts of brain imaging techniques we have available now. He used EEG, electroencephalogram, which measures uh, electrical activity from the scalp, which reflects neural activity from the brain underneath. First thing we're going to do is practice making a spontaneous hand movement. And for this, I'd like you, at a certain moment, to raise your hand up from the chair and to open the fingers violently and suddenly. Good, and now rest your hand again. So this time I'd like you to do this again, but at a time of your own free will. So you decide when you want to move your hand, and then make that movement suddenly. And it was well known that there's something called the readiness potential, which means that if, you're in, if you lift your finger or make any motor response, there is a change in, the, in brain activity before you lift your finger, up to one second before you lift your finger. You can see a slow change in activity over the middle of the brain about here. And this occurs when you make a voluntary movement, that is to say when you decide to lift your finger yourself rather than being signaled by a stimulus to press a button. So he took advantage of that signal in the brain. He told them, lift your finger when you have the urge to do so, but he also asked them to say when they had the urge. Here we have a special clock. It consists of a single fast-moving hand, and I would like you to use this clock to report the time, the exact moment that you feel the urge to move. And he did this by having a little clock face that was constantly going around, and he said, Whenever you have the urge to lift your finger, lift your finger and also note on the clock what the time was. And then I ask you afterwards. 
So for each finger lift, he had the time at which they had the urge to lift. And this time, as you might hope, was about 200 milliseconds before they actually lifted their finger. But he also had the brain activity measured, so he could also answer the question, at what time did the change in brain activity occur before the finger lift happened? And this was, I mean, I can't remember exactly, but about 500 milliseconds before the finger was lifted. In other words, he could detect a change in brain activity before, earlier than the time at which the subject said they had the urge to lift their finger. Many other researchers have replicated this basic finding that we are aware that we feel the subjective urge to move approximately one-fifth of a second before we actually move. And yet, at the same time, we can record the neural correlates of this preparatory activity well in advance of the movement, one half of a second earlier than our subjective awareness of it. And indeed, most recently, John Dylan Haynes has done a fMRI experiment essentially of the same technique and could show changes in the brain up to 10 seconds before the decision to move the finger occurred. So their awareness of the decision seems to post-date uh, what actually in their heads determines which way they go. And of course, it's very natural to interpret this in the following way, that actually free will is a bit of an illusion because uh, before we take the decision, something in our head has already determined what we're going to decide. So it wasn't really up to us which decision we take. In our everyday lives, we have the intuitive notion that we decide to move and then we move, or we decide to act and then we act. So Libet showed in his experiment that the brain knows what we're going to do half a second before we know what we've got to do. So this was phenomenal and groundbreaking and very challenging to our sense of identity and to our sense of who we are. For the first time he showed that there is this division between our mind and the brain, that their activity does not always operate exactly in parallel, that there is a time lag. Your apparently free-willed idea that you're going to lift your finger actually comes after something that has already happened in your brain. It's driven by your brain. It's all completely predetermined. You don't have free will. It's, a, it's an illusion.